welcome to season two of the Wine O'Clock Show. Tim Robards and Catherine Britt joins me on the couch for our premiere. Uh, cheers, it's Friday, it is six cheers. o'clock and it is wine cheers. down. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Have a sip. You know, you know when you sip, you've got to look at each other. You haven't heard Delightful. of that? Mm. Delightful. Mm. That's when not you good. sip, wine. I usually mm. do it when you cheers, but then you? when you sip as well. Somebody told me mm. you've got to look at each other in the eye. Yeah, I've mm. heard the cheers one. Mm. You have to look at when you cheers. So Tim, 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 you've joined us on the couch today. I feel special. First you, episode back this season. I know, season. I know. Great. You're kicking off the season. We, we're getting into a bit of a, you know, it is spring, summer and kicking off with a bit of a health uh, and fitness regime. Well, getting balance back, with a glass balance, of yeah. wine, you know, Friday <laughs> yeah. afternoon. Friday afternoon. You, you Who know. wants to work out on a Friday night? You know? <laughs> That's right. <So>. True. <laughs> Tell us what you've been up to lately. So I've been really busy. So um, obviously last year and a half, two years, I've um, developed the Robards Method. So hopefully you guys have heard of that. Um, So basically trying to make health and fitness easy and approachable for for as many people as possible. Mm. So uh, my background, I'm a chiropractor. Um, 15 years ago, I was a personal trainer while I was going through uni, then I did exercise science. And then I've just always loved kind of helping people be the best that they can be. Mm. And um, that's what I, I, I have a very sort of holistic approach with chiropractic, but I'm only ever helping one person at a time. Mm. So my passion has now gone into really like a lot of the issues, sometimes people come in, they might have back pain, but really underlying they're, you know, they're, they're overweight, their body's inflammatory because the food they're putting in it and the stresses they put on it, they're generally not happy. So I enjoy not so much in the clinic, you know, helping mm. their back pain. I enjoy actually increasing their quality of life, which comes from increasing their health on a, a really bad, like looking at all elements. Mm. And so I got more and more to you know, the reason why they're not well or as well as they could be, it's not necessarily their lack of adjustment. It's it's the simple stuff, getting the nutrition, getting the exercise right. And then if you need a little adjustment or some chiropractic work, we throw that on top. But mm. so getting that right. So that's where the robots method came from. And um, that's been the last two years of my life. Yeah, I um, love, I've been onto your website and had a look at it and I love how simple you've made everything. You've given people meal plans and, you know, exercise routines. Tell us about the 721 method. Yeah, so basically it's how I, how I eat. I mean, there's so many things out there which are great. Some people need to cut, like cut certain things out of their life for good if you, if you react to them. But for a lot of people, that's really hard. It's, it's not sustainable. Mm. And you just see people, they diet and they put weight back on, and they fluctuate, then they, you know, they feel bad because they can't actually see it through. So I feel like I, I, myself, I've never really fluctuated. I don't kind of up and down, up and down. I, I have a good balance and it's probably one thing I've been really lucky whether it's from my parents or whatever and the things they've instilled in me but 721 is like your little formula to sustainable nutrition so basically it's eating 70% super clean so whole foods Mm -hmm. nothing processed then 20% so over your week then 20% the two is the sensible part so if you want to have like your hamburger or your pizza or something like that be a little bit smarter be sensible about what ingredients you use because you might be able to swap one ingredient for another that still gives you a similar result but it's a lot better for you mm. or balance it out so if you want to have spaghetti bolognese instead of just pasta and meat you know throw in some veggies or halve your pasta with some zucchini noodles mm. you know like so that's your, your sensible and then your 10% is relaxed. So you want a glass of wine or you're just keeping it real, you know? Like and to some people relaxed, there's still cacao nibs and something really healthy. Other people, it might be that bit of dessert or, you know, you are at an event and you want to try some of the finger food. But if it's less than 10% of your week, generally you'll be able to keep a good balance mm-hmm. there. It doesn't have to be like, yeah. Or one way or nothing, you know? Because I think that's what people find the hardest, isn't it? Is like, oh, if I go on a diet, or if I go on an exercise routine, mm. I have to be really diligent and I've got to be yeah. watch what I eat. And I think that's just not realistic. Yeah, and mm. the thing, biggest thing, like people before they go, right, I've got to start exercising, but in the head, that means I've got to do it five days or six days a week. I've got to be doing hour and a half sessions and I need to be like doing this strict diet all at once. So that like, before you even start, you're failing because it, that's, pretty unachievable yeah. Yeah. whereas if you just start with just start with a walk one day a week and then gradually it'll become two days and then three days mm. so just doing little bits and you'll build on that whereas so many people fail before they even start mm. because they just set an unrealistic expectation of themselves mm. yeah. so yeah Catherine. we're literally having this conversation yeah. last <laughs> night literally yeah. like because i'm just getting back into you know getting healthy again yeah. and stuff after all my treatment and literally i was saying to my husband 
I think I always start and go, oh my God, I've got to run every day and I've got to do all of this. And I, I create unrealistic goals and then yep. get upset. Whereas I just, you know, I've just started slow and, you know, setting real goals. So yeah. Yeah. it's good to hear it from a professional. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's that's the, the only way to really do it. Yeah. Otherwise it's yeah. just, you do, you'll go all or nothing and then people, and then they just literally just drop off. Mm. And so, yeah. you know, that's, that's not healthy to me, even though you might, you know, you do it five days a week, you think that's healthy, but really it's not sustainable, it's not healthy, it's, it's too one yeah. way or the other. Mm. So, yeah. mm. Catherine Britt, welcome yes. to the couch. Oh, thank you, it's good to be here. <laughs> I think you are Australia's country music female artist of the year this year. Yeah, yeah. Among I other years, lucky. I think 2009, 2013, 11, there's a few. Couple, yeah, I think. Three, Three females right. now, yeah. And so, a few singles of the year. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Good to be here. Now, where are you at with everything with your music? Because I know you've you've just October is obviously um, Breast Awareness Month, and yes. you struggled with breast cancer. Uh, I think was it last year? Yeah, I got mm. diagnosed um, last May mm. um, at 30 years old, and um, yeah, it's all over now though. Thank God, I've been through all the treatment and done all of that we had a little scare recently where they found a like tumor mm. in my abdomen but apparently it's benign so these are the sort of things that you kind of have to deal with after um with mm. after cancer you know and going through it but so far so good and so how are you feeling feeling better feeling yeah good? I feel better every day um I think it takes you know it depends on who you talk to but they say a good year to sort of feel normal again um, I think the main thing for me is I just get tired really easily now, um, whereas I used to be a ball of energy all the time. So I think that that's something that's going to have to build up over time and incorporating exercise again and things will help with that. And now you're back on your country music journey. Yeah. What's next for you? Um, I'm actually working on a new record um, soon. We're in the um, steps of building a studio at home in Newcastle. Just going to build one um, at the back of our house so I can just go out and record any time and uh, write songs and stuff. So um, sort of doing that right now and uh, about to release a new single. That's, well, should I say it's released today, actually. Oh, yes, oh, it's fantastic. just come out. So... Um, you're going to play that a little later. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm pretty excited about that as well because they're raising money for the McGrath Foundation and um, yeah, I'll tell you I about it. I didn't realise you were a Nova Castrian. I am, yeah, yes. Me too. Oh, Look there at you that. go. Yeah, oh, nice. Newcastle. <laughs> well, we're going to kick off the first topic and it is about uh, this week, uh, who handles money better? Is it the male or is it the female? Oh dear. Uh, Lib <laughs> Liberty Bank has come out this week to state so that many. women... <laughs> too heavy there. Women tend to control the money in relationships and it's women that seem mm -hmm. to stick to their budgets and it's women that, if payments get off track, manage to bring it back into line. Catherine, do you agree with that? Look, I think in, in my relationship, yes. Um, and it's funny because I used to be so bad with money, but I think a mortgage will make anybody mm. re be good with money. Like mm. you just have to or you lose your house. So, you know, that's just something I guess that comes with, with, uh, with growing up as well. But I, don't, I think it's different with every relationship. I don't think you can say, you know, the woman should always take care of the money and, and that's, that's the bottom line. But I think sometimes, you know, the male in the relationship is better with the money. So... I don't know. I think it's. <laughs> Do you agree with that? Too? Depends. <laughs> oh, th those those stats you had before are they proven? <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely in my relationship. Um, as much as I love Anna, uh, she needs a little um, support and encouragement with keeping track of her, her money. So we've just been going through tack, and I'm like, you don't give, so she have you paid? Have word. you paid your GST? Yeah. Have you done this? And she's like, no, what's this? And, and then, you know, what's your um, notice of a set? Have you got your notice? Of, no, what's that? How, you know, she has no idea. And then she's got a tax bill. And she's like, how do I have to pay this? Why do I have to pay this tax? I'm like, that's life, babe. Sorry. Yeah. Well, there so you go. Not, so not in your no. household. Yeah. Do you yeah, run no, the money? Definitely. Yeah, I definitely, run the money yeah. in my household. Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't get to touch Anna's, but, you know, still, I help her spend it. <laughs> <laughs> and she helps you spend yours. Exactly. Yeah. That's the way it works. <laughs> Um, being on the, the health uh, regime this week with Tim on the show, uh, there's been a British case survey that's come out saying that swearing is actually good for us uh, and that it's a very rich emotional and um, creative language mm. that basically uh, helps us be a little bit more strong and tough. What do you think about that, Tim? I think that study's full of friggin' shit, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, can you beep that out? Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I better turn that back. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I think, you know, sometimes it's a good out, it's like crying, you know, like there's a reason why we cry, it's a release. Mm. And sometimes releasing that built up stress, otherwise it can manifest in your body in different mm. things, you know, and being able to release that mm. is is good. I think just do it in a nice way. Like my, my, my dad's funny, he doesn't like the F word. I mm. can't use it. If we're watching from when I was a kid, like if we're watching a, an M rated movie, He'll if they say it once or twice, like he'll kind of walk out. <laughs> and so it's really hard because he oh, misses out on all these great movies with great underlying things that could change your life. But, you know, so it's funny. So I, I try, I don't swear much. I think it depends who you're around. Yes. But um, Pick your audience. there's definitely times when definitely. I might be on the laptop and I can't get something. I'm like, <laughs> you know, and I let out a few. See, I, I'm a big, I really love this survey because I'm a, I, I, I hate to admit it, but I am a big swearer. I, you know, the F word is like my second favourite word. Um, <laughs> What's your first? Fridays. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's a great release because, I mean, I, not only, you know, have I got this show and doing the show, but, you know, I also have um, a real estate agency and employ 20 people. And, you know, that can be quite frustrating and mm. you want to yeah. go home and venting and getting all this, it, this stuff out it really helps me release mm. a bit of stress and anxiety. Yeah. And the best way to do that is with a swear word, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> I think, honestly, I, I think it's... Uh, some of my most intelligent friends swear mm. a lot. Um, and I, th I do think it's a sign of intelligence. I don't know. I mean, uh, granted, I'm from the music industry, <laughs> so we you swear like a song later on the F word. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with the fact that you choose your place to do it, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, um, when I was doing radio, obviously, you don't swear yes. on radio. You know, you, you, you know, working with kids, things like that. Yeah. But I think if you're in a controlled environment with the right people and then they, they're swearing as well, then absolutely. Or you're at home and you kick your toe or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Not in front of the public. But <laughs> yeah. So do you ever swear in your songs? Does it help you, you know, express yourself more? <laughs> Funny you say that. Um, yeah, well, the single that we released today is actually called F U Cancer. Oh, so okay. it's not a blatant, you know, the F bomb, but yeah. um, it's a subtle way of saying, you know, screw you, basically. Um, but yeah, look, I do, um, again, I choose my audience. If I've got a young crowd or there's kids there, little girls looking up to me and stuff like that, I'll, I'll hold off. I might say like, You do the radio or, friend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, totally. But I'm pretty tame in that in that atmosphere. Um, but if it's just a full um, crowd of adults, I will, you know, say it here and there when it's appropriate. Um, I kind of have a couple of songs that I, you know, do it in a cheeky way. But it's never offensive, I don't think, mm. or um, abrasive. It's just yeah. cheeky. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Has fit shaming become the new fat shaming? This week, Mel Doyle. Um, talk to a PT trainer about um, you know body image and you know we see a lot of these yummy mummies now all over Instagram and Facebook and social media mm. and um, you know there's the debate about getting back into your bikini body six weeks after mm. giving birth and whether it's realistic and all this sort of stuff mm. that's been going on. Um, why do you think we are so critical of women who want to look after their bodies? Oh, such a big topic, this one. Mm. Where do I begin? Um, like I, I see you know, social media these days, there's all these, you know, people have to live up to a certain thing and I think this, everyone's so image conscious. Mm. I, as I get older, I become more and more, like when I, when I was in my 20s, you know, you want to impress the girls and it's about how you look, but more and more becomes about how you feel. Mm. And I think um, we need to keep focusing on that, easier said than done. Um, it's. I try and be like I, I, when I watch that. I kind of look at my. I looked at myself and I go, "Am I? Am I doing that through my social mm -hmm. media? Am I fit shaming people?" But <laughs> I, you know, can I just I might, say when I Google you, all you see is you with your top off on everything. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, so a few, yes, yeah. there's a few. There's a few things. <laughs> but I, like, I think it's important to still, like, I practice what I preach. Yeah. I don't stand out there and go, you should do this, this, and this, and not do it. Mm. Like, I, I try and be aspirational, mm. and for people to look up for inspiration, not to go, you should feel guilty if you don't look like me. I would never be like that. But it's a, it's a fine balance of mm. how do you inspire people and lead by practicing what you preach, but not saying, you know, if you don't look like me, it's, you know, I don't know. It's, it also depends how pe the people looking at that how they feel about themselves mm. will will also determine what they get from that looking at a picture of myself and what I say with that. So, mm. 
you know, you, at the end of the day, you really need to start loving your body. You need to train because you love it, not because you hate it. And yep. Do you find you get a lot of criticism because you look, you know, you're very obviously very sculptured and stuff and do you find that you get criticism from other people about the way you look? No, I think not, not really. I think mm. I've been lucky because I try and with my messaging, I always say it's like, I think the way I look is more a result of what I do, like my, you know, my, my lifestyle. So I, my number one is to feel a certain way and be able to do things like, you, I find if I'm healthier, I get more enjoyment out of life, mm. I have less sick days, I'm more energetic, I do more things with my partner, you know, and that for me is the thing I enjoy. And having a, a good physique is kind of a reflection of that. I'm not driven mm. by, I need to look good and that's why I go to the gym. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are, so that's what I'm trying to change. So all my messaging is, it's not usually do this, look this way, it's, talking about function mm. and if you I'm trying to encourage people to function better on the inside on the outside and looking good is a ref, sort of a reflection of that and yep. how you treat your body to a certain degree mm. Um, mm. yeah what do you think Catherine um, I think that you know there have always been those women out there that are really into exercise mm. and want to get their body back after pregnancy but I think social media is you know I guess, yeah, put a spotlight on it because mm. they now have a way of showing the world that they're doing it. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's wonderful that that's what they love to do, but that's their thing, you know, and mm. I think everybody's got their thing. Some people are comfortable being, you know, normal weight or um, not, you know, chiseled and all that sort of stuff. Some people are and healthy, mm. you know, in that way. And he's mm. right. It should be you ex find what you love in exercise and do that and eat right and everything else as a result of that, but I think you choose what suits you. Mm. Um, I don't know, I don't, I've never really seen a lot of fit shaming and stuff like that, and I'm in the music business mm. where it's all about the way that you look, but I think confidence and loving yourself and believing in yourself is a huge attractiveness. Like, I, I think that's way more attractive than having a chiseled body, you know, yeah. a great personality and, and just being confident in who you are. Mm. So it is that time of the day that we love so much here on The Wine O'Clock Show. It is Never Have I Ever. Okay. Have you played? I have. <laughs> I've dabbled. Yeah. At I like have. two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I have never. I have never. Sorry, I have. You get okay. a panel. Okay. And, Thank uh, you. I'm going to ask you some questions and you have to say whether you have or you have never. Okay. okay. And you can't lie and never have I ever. Just saying. Okay. If you lie, you've got to take a piece of clothing off. Just saying, Tim. But anyway. <laughs> 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 never have I ever kissed someone of the same sex. Um... It's a story behind. <gasps> Timothy, <laughs> not out of, not out of. No, I've <laughs> good, good mate of mine. He's like, was that was, was one, no, no, no. It's one of the times where he's like getting out of the car. See you later. And yeah. he, he's, he's literally, he's just got these big. Everyone knows him as these big sloppy lips. And he's like, all right, see you later. I'm oh. just planted it. Oh. <laughs> Catherine, tell your oh, look, story. I think what, you know, what new age girl hasn't? You know, like I just think it's part of growing up. Now you just have to kiss your girlfriend at some point. But I don't know. That's about as far as I've gone. Does your husband know about this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've told him everything. He's, you know, so proud. <laughs> Never have I ever played strip poker. Oh, have I played strip poker? I have oh, I'm going to yeah. say probably. Really? I've never. Yeah. I'm naughty. Oh. I have. Really? Was it memorable? Yeah. All the way, full Monty? Um, no. Oh, I'm, I'm, everyone else was, but I was, I, of <laughs> course was I won. Yeah. Of course <laughs> I won. <laughs> he was still fully clothed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did um, you, full Monty? I, no, I don't think, honestly, I feel like I have at some point, not recently, so I don't remember playing strip poker, but I'm sure I did when I was younger, like a teenager. Yeah, I think it would have something. been, been, yeah. it's been yeah. a few years for me, uh, definitely. <laughs> um, Halfway. <yeah. laughs> uh, never have I ever gone commando. Is that? Like no underwear. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Just, really? Are you commando today? <laughs> I did no, today. I actually know, don't you? I did, but um, no, there's been many a time where <laughs> you come out of the gym and I'm like, oh, I forgot to pack another, like I have a shower, but I forgot to pack undies and then I've got to run out in my shorts and mm. feel the wind in your whiskers, so <laughs> they say. You know. They say it's healthier, don't they? Have you gone commando yeah, for men? Uh, yeah, yeah, I honestly, I think it's more comfortable, especially in summer. Mm. I think, you know, as long as you've got the appropriate thing on, a long dress or whatever, absolutely. But I have undies on today, in case yeah. you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Never have I ever sent a nude photo or raunchy text to the wrong person. Oh gosh. 
I've never. To the wrong. That would be horrible. Think. Really? I no. Are you sure? <laughs> no. I'm wondering like, though if I've ever been sent one. I think I've been sent one from people. I think it was, I think it was my mate. Oh, <laughs> gross! Oh, no. So not even maybe, a woman. <laughs> maybe under, like, maybe it was the same mate that kissed me. <laughs> maybe he's got a silent crush on you. <laughs> oh, that was an accident. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, never have I ever had sex on the beach, and I'm not talking about the cocktail. <laughs> never have I ever. Oh, I have. Really? Happily married. Yeah. <laughs> and having sex on the beach. Yeah, yeah apparently. <laughs> and really? cocktails too. Naughty. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, grew up in New- Newcastle's got a great beach. Not you the Newcastle yeah, people, people. Right, there, was, there was one time, this didn't involve sex on the beach, but when I was younger, I went out and I had, like, it was a bit of a bigger night. And um, I got home and it was one of those, it's not very often I ne- ever forget anything. And, you know, I was probably 20. And um, I got home and I get up the next day and there's like sand in the bed. And I'm like, <laughs> we live 30 minutes from the beach. I'm like, I was, at, I was out at clubs last night where the hell did this sand, sand? come oh, from dear. and there's like one of those days when gradually there's like flashbacks and i'm like hang on we went <laughs> did you have a hangover moment where you had to like reach <laughs> yeah it was exactly like us. that i had sex like, on the beach on. i've got this glimpse of i was in my undies and i'm oh, oh, swimming God. i think we went like skinny dipping on the beach yeah, with yeah, some yeah. friends you know or half skinny dipping yeah so. newcastle would be a pretty hard place to have sex on the beach <laughs> it's not the most private beaches but yeah no. oh hey. last one never have i ever joined the mile high club um, does it count with yourself? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Sad. No. No. <laughs> I, no. It's how? What, in the toilets? Yeah, no, nah, that's I was, gross. I don't know, Tim, you tell us. So I, was, yeah, well, no. No, I, was, I was really lucky recently. Anna and I went to Europe and we flew over. Um, we, Did you we say had I a, have or I haven't? Well, you know. I haven't. No, I haven't. <gasps> mm. Just right. to be clear. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we flew <laughs> over to Europe and we, we splurged and bought a business class ticket. And then, long story short, we actually got an upgrade to first class. And they have awesome. what they call this first class apartment. And you have like your own, like a couch and a single bed. And then Anna had the same thing. And then the wall comes down, but to about halfway. So you're from here to here. So you can lay basically in like a queen size bed. Right. Oh, you can kiss awesome. each other good night. And there's a door that shuts. You can still peek over the door. So we're kind of like, when we first got in there, we're like, right, this is our chance. Yeah. But then I, I had, we had a bit of a stressful start to the trip. And the guy serving the food and wine was like a basic sommelier. So I was kind of like drinking all the different wines and that. <laughs> By the time it came time to Bruce go to Street. bed, I was, I think I was, I was like dancing around in my undies and um, basically Sex it was like, right, out the window. Yeah. Light, babe. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, you're leaving me high and dry here. Yeah, yep. that's our thing. That's she, yeah, that's the high and dry club. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about having alcohol in a plane too. I reckon you get, if you have one glass of wine, it's like 10, you know. Yeah. Is there well, something the guy, about the altitude the or? Like, kept topping me up every time and I just you know you kind of lost track and then by the end of it it was the worst night's sleep I've ever had every 20 minutes I kept waking up just dry yeah yeah know? and I wasn't actually I didn't feel like very pissed or anything but I was just was dry yeah mm. I was yeah. like whoa god yeah Yes, not good drinking on a plane. Well, thank you so much for joining me on today on the show and for a yes. premiere and the, the the start of season two. Cheers! Well, have cheers! A, have we'll a have fabulous weekend, guys! <laughs> and thanks for great. Um, good luck with the single. So, thank where you. can everyone buy it? iTunes. Mm. iTunes. Um, the best way to do it is Google "F U Cancer." Yeah. <laughs> well, you better be careful about what you actually bring up there. Yeah, actually, don't. Just go to <laughs> iTunes, and <laughs> it'll be in there today. So. Well, thank you so much, guys. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks for having us.